Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. This video is going to be all about my year at the Vervet Monkey Foundation in South Africa. Throughout this video, I want to teach you a little bit about vervets, but also just highlight all the amazing work that the VMF do in order to support this species. You're gonna see a little bit about what happens when vervets arrive on site and also how we get them into troops and into foster families and make sure they really get their second chance at life. So please sit back, enjoy, and I really hope that you learn something cool from this video. So vervet monkeys are a pretty widespread species. They exist throughout most of Southern Africa and the key thing they have going against them is that they are considered vermin. People have a lot of misconceptions about them, they think of them as dirty, as dangerous, but in reality they are just a regular primate species that has been driven closer to urban areas because of vast deforestation. They're actually incredibly clean, um, they don't seek out conflict, especially with humans, and the only time you're really going to get a lot of aggression from them is if you are provoking or scaring them. Because of these misconceptions that people have, vervets are often a victim of abuse. They are run over by cars, they are shot with pellet guns, they are killed by farmers, and a lot of the time this means that we end up with a lot of orphaned vervets. That is the first thing I want to talk to you about in terms of the work at the VMF. Now these vervets have usually had their families killed or have been found abandoned and people haven't really had it in them to give the same fate to the babies. That's why they get brought through to us. Sometimes they have been kept as pets for a little while first and sometimes they come as young as two weeks old. They spend three days in quarantine before they are able to interact with any other monkeys on site. During this time they are in what we call Neverland. In this room they will have constant care 24-7. It's also where we start the first stage of their rehabilitation if they are ready. This includes teaching them how to drink from a milk bottle that will now replace the milk they would be getting from their mothers in the wild. And it also includes teaching them how to use what is called a feeding cage. This feeding cage has holes that are just small enough for babies to come in and out and we put them on the fence line of the enclosures so that once these babies join our troops we're still able to provide them with the milk that they need until it's time for them to naturally be weaned off. So learning how to use this feeding cage and drink from the bottles in this way is going to become one of their most vital skills for their life on the sanctuary. Once this isolation is over we move the monkeys to what we call Disneyland. Here the babies that we have that aren't contagious and that can all run around together, get the chance to play, to socialize, to develop some of their natural behaviors. It's really important for them to be able to play with each other and to actually spend time with monkeys so they're not relying on humans for everything and for all of their socialization. It's also a really good opportunity for them to start getting to know the wild troop of monkeys on site. It means we can get an idea of how confident they are with monkeys, which makes matching them up with foster families in the future a little bit easier. And again, it just means they're getting more interaction with their own kind, which is just a win-win situation. While they are in Disneyland, we will also make sure they stay really nice and healthy, and obviously make sure that they stay clean because they are not getting proper primate grooms at this point. And bath time is always a pretty fun time in Disneyland. Once we have established that the monkeys are healthy, both physically and mentally, we will move them to an intro cage by a troop. Now what troop we decide to move them to will depend on the personality of the monkey, the age of the monkey, the male to female ratio already within the troops, but the idea is to start socializing them through the fence with the monkeys, particularly the females, so that we can start then introducing them face to face and find them a foster mom. This foster mom is going to help them develop all of the skills that they need to survive in a troop and then eventually take them out into the troop so that the others will accept them. The intro cage is also just a really cool time for them to develop some of their climbing skills and socialize with other monkeys if they're going to be integrated as part of a pair or a group. Obviously for some of the monkeys, particularly the ones that come to us very young, they do get a certain amount of attachment to humans and human care. So sometimes meeting mums for the first time can be a little bit stressful for them. But it always works out in the end. Even if maybe sometimes we have to try a couple of troops before we find the right match or a couple of females within the same troop, we always manage to find a combination that works and get those monkeys out into the troop. 
So once they meet a foster mum, they will be given time to bond with her in the intro cage. Um, this will vary depending on the monkey, but for some it'll just be a couple of days and they'll be ready to go out. For some it will be months. When it comes time to let them into the troop, we will generally wait until the foster mum is carrying them, and then we will open the doors of the intro cage and let them out. It is so cool when they go out seeing all the different monkeys wanting to come and say hello and welcome them into the troops and they become so loved and so protected so quickly. Especially when there are younger females who have been integrated into the troop in previous years, they love taking on the new babies and looking after them and seeing them out there in that troop with their second chance at life, with their new foster family, it's really an amazing feeling. So obviously not all the monkeys that come onto the site arrive as babies. Some arrive a lot older. They will usually live in intro cages. We do still try and get them into troops, but they go through a slightly different integration process. And sometimes monkeys just need that bonding time again and again and again until they feel ready to go out and become part of the troop family. While these monkeys are living in these intro cages and not quite ready yet to join troops or perhaps can't join troops because of some behavioural or medical issue, we make sure they get the best care possible. Uh, we make sure that they have access to any medicine or supplements that they may need to stay healthy and if they are not being socialised or we are unable to house them with other monkeys then we also make sure that they get some enrichment. We are also constantly re-evaluating and assessing the intro cages and the structure just to see if there's anything we can do to make the lives for these monkeys any better. So this is Banya and Armies getting an extension on their cage. Oh. Hermes using the special ramps put in for him to easily get up to the perch. And actually it's these monkeys in the intro cages and the ones out in the troops that take up most of our time day to day. And we're always making sure that they have access to all the food and the water that they need, checking the maintenance on their enclosures, making sure that the troop dynamics are getting on okay. And from time to time we might have to intervene. There are definitely certain monkeys in troops that require a little bit more monitoring and care, perhaps because they have a physical disability or they are amputees. We also have some blind monkeys. Um, we have a monkey who has suffered from brain damage. These kind of cases we check on every day just to make sure they're doing all right and make any adjustments needed to their living arrangements to make their life easier. But honestly, you would be surprised how amazingly they do in the troops. The way these vervets bounce back from injury is really pretty amazing. But on the rare occasion that they're not doing so great, then we will pull them into an intro cage and sometimes trap them and bring them to our sick bay or clinic for some special care. It was very, very deep, that one. Mm -hmm. And that's where the initial infection okay. came from as well. There we go. For the monkeys that have to have a prolonged stay in sick bay, we make sure that they get everything they need. A lot of the time they are perfect, wonderful guests, and then some of the time they want to rip your head off for trying to help them. The ultimate goal of this is to see them out in those troops, living their best life, socializing with each other, looking after each other, fighting, establishing hierarchies, doing everything that a wild monkey should be doing and knowing that you can give them a little bit of a chance at life that humans took away from them. Seeing them in their troops, living this life and thinking about what the alternative would have been for them, I think it's a really, really amazing thing. If you want to learn more about the Vervet Monkey Foundation, then I'm going to leave links to all of their websites and everything in the description box down below. The easiest thing that you can do is subscribe to their YouTube channel. This way you can financially support them by just letting the ads run on the videos and you can learn a bit more about what is currently happening there 
and see the stories of all the orphans from last year from arrival on the site to getting into their new foster troops. Obviously this video was a super brief overview of the work done there, but if you want to learn more in depth about any of the particular processes that I mentioned, say the adult integrations or the enrichment, then please let me know. I would absolutely love to talk more in depth about some of those things. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching and I hope I'll see you again soon.